This is Surfing Through Cinema. I'm your host, Hawaii Harry. Today, I'll be discussing the first film for Cinephile Week. This is a film directed by legendary director Akira Kurosawa, and this has inspired many movies, including The Magnificent Seven, The Avengers, and even A Bug's Life. Starring Toshiro Mifuni, a frequent, a frequent collaborator with Akira Kurosawa, this week is all about Seven Samurai. Okay, so some technical details about Seven Samurai. So, <clears throat> the film was released in 1954, and it was the most expensive Japanese movie ever made at the time, and it cost 125 million yen, or 1.1 million dollars in U.S. dollars. And there are many um, rumors and false stories that this almost bankrupted um, <clears throat> that this almost bankrupted Toho, the company who created it. But in reality, um, this movie and Godzilla were released in the same year. So they had enough funds to make both of those movies, which are both very, very expensive. And they both ended up paying off very, very well. Uh, this film grossed over 600 million yen, about 175 million in US dollars. And it's widely known as the most popular Japanese movie of all time. And, <clears throat> and so the next point, it is credited as the first modern action film. Um, they stylized a lot of the fighting and the dialogue. So it was a lot more faster paced than um, what was coming out at that time. And then another technical detail, they use multi-camera, they use multiple cameras to capture the action so they could get multiple angles. This way they can do a lot of the same scene. <clears throat> this way they can get a lot of different angles and a lot of different positions within the same fight. So they didn't have to redo it over and over again. And this proved to be very efficient and very effective for Kurosawa. He did use this for the rest of all of his action movies. All right, so let's get into the plot. <clears throat> a poor farming village seeks counsel of their village elder what to do when some bandits keep trying to take their crops and keep taking their crops. He recommends finding samurai warriors because in the past he's experienced them um, taking down bandits and saving villages. So this is what he recommends. And so <clears throat> some villagers go out and they encounter an older samurai, a ronin, meaning he doesn't have a master, he's just on his own. And his name is Kambe and he agrees to help and he helps recruit six other samurai. And, <clears throat> and so with these six other samurais, they return to the village, but they find that the villagers have hidden themselves. And uh, Kikuchiso, played by Toshiro Mifuni, um, he's a crazy wild man who may or may not actually be a samurai. Um, he rings the village alarm, warning them, you know, the bandits are coming. But in reality, he used it to get them out of their hiding places and to call them, you know, cowards and hypocritical because the villagers came out and said, you know, samurai save us. And he's like, well, we just came here and none of you showed up. So do you want us or not? It was pretty straightforward. And because of this, he was accepted as a, a powerful ally, whether or not he was actually a samurai. And, and so each of them, <clears throat> and so the seven samurai train um, the villagers to prepare themselves to take down, to prepare themselves to take down the villain, <clears throat> to take down um, the bandits that are going to come. And so they all learn how to fight. They learn how to build up defenses to protect their village. And, uh, and the samurais devise a plan that involves creating blockades, flooding fields, and standing in the line, all his defenses to block the village. And, and so with this, um, the bandits come on horses and marching men, and they're able to block a lot of the parts of the village. There's one part they leave open so that one horse could get in, 
and then they block it up again. And then the villagers inside the village, they go out and they kill the man on the horse. And they keep using this strategy over and over again until eventually there's only about 20 people left. I believe 20 or 13 people left. <clears throat> and so the older samurai, he says, now, these guys know our strategy. They're probably going to send all of their men all at once to try and take us down. So we need to be able to fight and stand up to them. And, uh, and he turns out to be right. They attack early in the morning when it's raining crazily and um, all kinds of flooding going on. And they wipe out and kill all of the bandits. But unfortunately, the price that was paid was uh, four of the seven samurai ended up dying, including uh, Kikoshio. The key, Kiku Chiso. I'm not very good at pronouncing their names, but Toshiro Mifuni's character, he ends up dying. And it's very, very tragic. And uh, the last shot in the film is there's a hill and you could see all the, all four of the samurai's mounds where they were buried and their swords sticking up out of it. And so that's the plot for Seven Samurai. Um, I'm going to go on a break real quick, but first, here's a message from our sponsor. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Here's how. It's totally free. There are tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your computer and even your cell phone. But that's not all. Anchor distributes your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You could even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor is everything you need to make a complete podcast all in one small place. So go on and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Okay, so we're back from our break. Now I'm going to get into some critical views and my personal views on Seven Samurai. So Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 100% stating, um, stating that it's Kurosawa's masterpiece, that it uses all the elements that he's really good at using, combines them, and makes a beautiful picture with it. And uh, the New York Times, um, they say it bears cultural comparison with Westerns, especially, <clears throat> especially High Noon, which was released in 1954 as well. And so you could definitely see the mixture of the Eastern cinema and Western cinema kind of combining together to make one cohesive and amazing storyline. And, uh, and then the next critical point, it's number one on Empire's, Empire Magazine's 100 best films of world cinema. And <clears throat> so across the board, people adore this film. Uh, the Criterion Collection, They've made a very beautiful master of it. And, uh, <clears throat> and interestingly enough, though, over the years, there have been multiple versions of it. Currently, the one that um, Criterion has is the full version of the movie. But about 15 years ago, that wasn't the case. There were so many versions of it that no one really had the complete movie, not until the past 15 years. And so... So people had different thoughts of it for a long time. And now, now that we have the whole picture, now it kind of makes sense. All right, so now I'll get to my personal views. So Kambe, he is my favorite samurai. He's, you know, he's a very good leader. He's very reserved and he doesn't get too crazy. He's pretty, um, pretty diplomatic too. He's good at leading his men and leading the village, but he's also a very good strategist. So. I think he's my favorite. Then after that, Toshiro Mifunis, he's definitely the comedic relief that I absolutely loved. I thought it was hilarious. But yeah, I, I really, really loved this movie. Um, although this is only the second Akira Kurosawa film I've seen, first being Hidden Fortress, I love this one a lot more. I think Hidden Fortress is kind of boring, honestly. And this is the movie I was kind of wishing it was. So I really, really like this one. And although I really liked it, <clears throat> I do think it could have been shorter. It's about three and a half hours long. Um, I think they spent too much time 
in the city looking for samurai. I think that was a good hour, hour and a half of the movie. Um, I think that could have been trimmed down to maybe 45 minutes. But other than that, beautiful film, beautiful cinematography. I could see why a lot of uh, movie studios try to recreate it now, especially the Marvel movies. They, they follow this to a T, honestly. <laughs> All right. Well, those are my thoughts and feelings on Akira Kurosawa's classic, Seven Samurai. <clears throat> next time, I'll be discussing the next film for Classic Hollywood Week. This is a movie by legendary director Charlie Chaplin and is both comedic and a dramatic film. This episode is all about The Great Dictator, which is Charlie Chaplin's first mainstream sound film. All right. Well, until next time, this has been Surfing Through Cinema with Hawaii Harry. Take care. Thank you for listening to Surfing Through Cinema. Make sure to check us out on Facebook at Surfing Through Cinema with Hawaii Harry and on Instagram with Surfing Through Cinema. We also have a website, www.anchor.fm forward slash surfing through cinema, where you can learn more details on upcoming episodes and on past episodes.